What is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another video. In this one we'll be answering a very interesting question I think uh, which keeps popping up and that is what if NATO aircraft with their better sensors such as the lightning pod and their array of precision guided weapons were involved in Ukraine on the Ukrainian side would they be able to perform better with um, being able to prosecute targets around the front line in a highly contested airspace, better than the Su-25s doing their rocket lofting uh, currently. Now, I actually genuinely didn't know the answer to this question myself because I thought, well, you have to stay a low level, otherwise you're going to die. So how can you possibly employ the lightning pod um, quickly enough and effectively enough and with what weapon um, in order to be able to prosecute targets? Now, we are going to make some assumptions here. First of all, uh, we are not looking at NATO as a whole. We're not looking at a giant air campaign with multiple flights of SEADs and F-35s and B-2 bombers overhead and all that kind of stuff. No, we're looking at a possibility of Ukraine uh, receiving F-16s with maybe some lightning pods and potentially some uh, guided weapons uh, in potentially limited numbers and working in conjunction with their own Su-27s and MiG-29s. So um, today, I mean, I don't fly the F-16, so I'm using the F-18, but the concept is absolutely identical for both airplanes. What we're doing here is um, I've created a little mission with a relatively realistic front line here around the Nguri River. This is broadly based on the 2008 uh, invasion of Georgia. But the thing is, um, I have used the absolute latest and greatest Russian weapons uh, for this mission. So uh, there is an array of armor scattered around the front line with uh, Panzeris, Panzer S1s, Tor systems. Uh, there is an S300 out here at um, Sukumi. Uh, Babushara, which uh, is protecting um, you know stuff from a little further away, and as you can see, the threat rings go all the way out here. So you know this is very contested airspace, highly representative of what you might see in Ukraine. Uh, we are flying an F-18 today, armed with four IR Mavericks, because in my personal opinion, this is my weapon of choice. We've got um, the lightning pod here on the cheek and uh, four IR Mavericks. I, I can't think of any better weapon. So if you guys can, please comment down below. But I, in my opinion, that is the only one that's going to work. So I'll explain to you as we uh, jump in the jet exactly what we're going to do. Now, we are going to make a couple of assumptions for this video. This is a proof of concept. I'm operating as a single ship. In real life, of course, you will have multiple flights. You probably have SEAD flights, maybe SU-27 uh, launching some harms out here, suppressing enemy air defenses. There's electronics warfare, which we cannot simulate in DCS as well. So the reality is you're going to have multiple flights operating here at once and potentially you could get a couple of guys to launch some decoys and then the other guys behind to launch their Mavericks uh, to confuse enemy um, surface to air missile systems as well. So with those caveats out the way, um, sit back and enjoy the video. We have two good exercises. You're clear to disconnect the headset. We'll see you on the left with the pin. Thanks a lot. All right, here we are, we're in the jet. Let's just go to auto throttle, bar altitude, and we are gonna go SA page on the bottom, go to waypoint one, waypoint designate that. We're also going to go into our ground mode, and gonna get the FLIR out there. So the FLIR is now um, slaved to our waypoint one, which is the front line, which is where we need to try and find some targets. Um, on the left side, we're going to go into HSI because we need to make use of the mark point function. And let's just go to Spencer and to override there as well. Um, so we're going to pitch up here. We're going to maintain the speed for now. In fact, you can even actually throttle down and touch. You don't really need to. There we go. 360 is fine. Now, uh, we're going to go um, have a look at some targets here. Find some targets around the front line. So we don't want to climb any higher than we really need to. So we're going to go to bar altitude hold now again maintain the speed we don't want to go too fast right that looks like it's in between the trees is going to be quite difficult for a maverick to attack Ooh, this looks quite handy is this what the hell is this is this the sam system i'm actually not sure this could be like a tour wow this is interesting right we'll select that 
we'll use the mark point function. Now I've got that bound to my HOTAS. Uh, what else can we find that's kind of easy out in the open? Right, there we go. There's some armor. Let's do that. Mark point two. Uh, there's a bunch of trucks here. Let's see if we can find some. There we go. That looks like some kind of APC. Now, that's mark point three. We've got 23 miles to run, so we're going to be diving down to the deck here pretty soon, so we're not in harm's way. Uh, okay, looks like we've got something else between the trees. That looks like a maybe sort of a BTR. Yeah, sort of a BTR potentially, BTR 82. Right. Mark point four. All right. So now that we have our target of opportunity acquired, we're going to dive back low level. Uh, we weren't afraid of staying too high at, you know, 20, 30 miles away from the front line because, you know, the uh, the only thing that could reach us from there is an, uh, probably an SA-10 that's positioned all the way out back. Um, anyway, and even barely reached, it's not really a huge deal. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to mark point four. I think that was a pretty good one to start with. Um, and we're going to waypoint designate that one. We're then going to go to the stores page, MAV, get that ready. Okay, so let's see. Master armor's on. Air grab mode selected. Let's punch the throttles up now and get some speed. We'll also get our helmet mounted sight. Jahamic's on because it's going to be quite useful. Um, make sure that everything is ready. The soy is on the right side. What we're going to do is get closer to about 8 miles low level. We're going to pop up. And we're then going to use the right DDI to fine-tune our TDC for the, uh, the target. We're going to do auto roll hold here. Auto roll hold at 520 knots is pretty good because we need our corner speed for maneuvering once we pop up. You don't want to be too fast. But you are going to die. Trust me, you need your corner speed to maneuver the aircraft quickly and dive back down low level. So, coming up to 8 miles, we'll pop up and, like I said, we'll be using the right DPI to fine-tune our target uh, over the TDC, switch to the left EDI, uncage the Maverick, fire or shoot, and then uh, evade. So, one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to pop up too soon because the Maverick is limited in range. So, you know, we pop up at 10 miles, acquire the target 9 miles, you're going to be sitting duck for a while uh, because you're only going to be shooting this thing at closer to 5 miles. So, you really don't want to be any closer, uh, any further away than you need to be. Right, we're going to pull up now. Looking, looking, looking. There we go. That's a good target. TDCD press. Right, we're going to roll in on it now. Get some chaff and flare. Uncage. Cage. Shoot the Maverick. Break off. Coming left. Get that corner speed. Low level. Let's go in between the trees. That's the only way that we can break lock with these um, deadly passes. And tours, ignore Bitch and Betty for a second. I mean, here we are very much in danger, although it may appear as if the threat rings are not going out this far. I can assure you they absolutely are. So, as you can see, if we ever did fly the front line, well, we would just we would die in seconds. So, I've got um, a bunch of flares and chaff out here. We fire off our Maverick. Uh, we dive down. Uh, this is actually looking at its tracking pretty well. Um, so I wonder what actually happens here. Okay, yeah. Oh, so there was a tour that fired. I think probably fired on us, but we broke that lock, and it was fine. I'm actually curious what happened here. So this Maverick actually wasn't intercepted by anything. Oh, we, we'll, we'll look. No, the tour is intercepting it. But so the Maverick must have hit something. It must have. Uh, the IR on it must have picked up something else, but it actually let's try out Mark Point 2 because I've got a feeling Mark Point 1 was a little bit further in behind the front line and could expose us a little bit. So we'll Mark Point 2. We'll do Waypoint Designate 16 miles away, so we'll recommit now and we'll repeat the process. So IR Mavericks is literally the only weapon I can think of that would work well in this particular scenario. Uh, if you guys have better suggestions, please comment down below. If you suggest JDEMs, uh, you know, I could tell you at seven miles for lofting a JDAM, you're going to be out at 6,000 plus feet. You're going to die. You're going to die 100 million billion gazillion percent. So, right, there we go. Seven miles. Let's go. Let's find it. And where is it? I don't see nothing. I don't see nothing. I don't see nothing. Here we go. There's a target. Good. Left. 
on gauge, where is it? Here? Nope, Maverick's not coming off, but we're gonna get shut out of the sky unless we're very careful to get that quarter speed, get low level. Now, yeah, that was a failed attempt. That's not gonna work. I failed attempt here. I was trying to pick up a target in the end. We had a tour fire at us. Um, so once again, you see, as soon as you get you get low level, you break lock, and uh, we we just came in for another go from a different direction this time. Keeping situational awareness is really important. Now you got to remember, real life, you'll have friendlies out here closer to the uh, the other side of the front line, but. With your sensor, it's very easy to see where you are looking relative to your waypoint. So if your waypoint is positioned on uh, the front line itself, then it's actually not really a problem in terms of friendly fire. It's very unlikely you're going to get friendly fire, even if you have um, very similar units. So as long as your sensor is looking at or beyond that point, then you can be sure that you're looking at the enemy. Ready? Eight miles, here we go. Nothing. It's moved. It's moved. Nope. Can't afford that. That's where the river is. That's the uh, the front line. So get some chaff out. Get some flare out. Once again, another failed attempt. And this is the thing. You gotta absolutely be patient. It's absolutely critical. Seven miles. What do we have? That's good. We got a tank. Come on. TDC depress. Come on, pick him up. Good. We'll go to the left DDI now. Come on, left gauge. Good. 4.5 miles. Shaft and flare. I think we might be out of flares though, so we're going to be very careful here. Here we go. The Maverick is coming off the rail. And uh, we're diving down. And as you can see, that tour system is really having a good time. It's actually launched two missiles. Uh, both of them are... Oh, here we go. There's a, there's a Panzer on that side. Look how fast that thing is flying. Boom. That's that's intercepted. Um, the tour is trying to intercept it, but um, maybe because of the terrain or something, and obviously those two missiles failed. But that Panzer is absolutely lethal. So that got our Maverick. Um, so we come in for another go here. Half a mile. Uncage, uncage, shoot the Maverick, come off left. Oh, I saw a trail behind us here, I don't know, we've just narrowly escaped death. All right, all right. By the looks of it, narrowly escaped death, I saw a missile trail behind us. So it's tracking... I don't see anything. There we go. Look how fast this thing is going. That is crazy. That's crazy. I mean, this is the problem with Mavericks. They're too bloody slow. What you need is a Maverick that is just, you know... You... Actually, you know what you'd need? Something like a Vichar. Uh, you know, those those Russian missiles on the SU-25T. We're just going to recommit and not target again uh, very quickly. Uh, just to see. We're going to at least get a BDA in terms of the flirt page. Let's see what's going on. Um, you know... In real life, like I say, you could have a team of, of, of harm shooters and everything. And I know, of course, if you get a, a couple of F-16s into Ukraine, it's not going to be exactly a, a massive air campaign. But, you know, at least if you get a couple of SU-27s providing CED, um, suppressing. Um, and, and also, you know, you could have uh, electronics warfare that we can't implement here in DCS, of course. Um, so, you know, things are not quite as simple in real life. Right, 8 miles. Here we go. Let's have a look. Uh, he's moved a little bit, I think. Oh, there's a tank. Let's get the tank. It's a T90 for me. Let's switch over to the other TDI. And on cage. On cage. Boom. Here we go. Ride of Mavericks. Fade. Get that corner speed. Like I say, this is critical that you're not too fast. Absolutely. And we fire off our Maverick. And that gets absolutely... Not annihilated. Oh, so I see. So that missile trail wasn't for me. That missile trail that was behind me was actually for that Maverick, and for some reason just didn't intercept. So uh, it actually managed to hit. Oh, oh, no, no, it didn't. Wow. What happened here? Did it yet? Oh, yes. We got a T90M, baby. 
Ha <laughs> yeah! Ho ho ho! Oh, I am delighted! Oh, that is awesome! Oh, that is sick! We got a T90M! Freaking awesome! The T90M got destroyed by our Maverick because at that point the uh, the SAM systems just didn't that didn't go, do a good enough job. So anyway, um, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, as I know it's been going on for a little while, but I just wanted to really demonstrate um, the tactics that I'm using here and basically to answer the question whether or not um, if you know Ukraine was to receive something like the F-16 with lightning pods, you know, would it make make a better CAS uh, close air support platform around the front line compared to the current rocket lofting the SU-25 uh, aircraft do? The answer is I think using this tactic, yeah. So um, like I say, if you guys have any suggestions for better tactics, if you could please comment down below. I mean, I'd be, I'd love to listen to him. And I mean, there's probably some weapons I'm, I'm not thinking about, but I'm just thinking the Maverick makes the most sense. Um, the, laser, the laser guided Maverick isn't, isn't that great, but the uh, IR Maverick is the only one that I can think of that would make sense. So um, yeah, it'd be great to hear your opinion. Um, so once again, thanks very much for watching this video. Please make sure to smash the living daylight out the like button, subscribe for future videos, and hopefully I shall catch you in the next one. Adios.